What is up? Welcome back again. If you are returning to our Mazda Drift Car Street Car Build Series. If you're new around here, I'm Heston and I'm building an FC LS swapped RX-7 for under $5,000. And in the last episode, we built the drive shafts. And in this episode, we're taking the motor and tranny out. We're going to separate them so we can get the proper throw out bearing. And then we need to pick up a couple U-joints for our drive shaft. And we should be able to start prepping the car for paint if we choose to paint. I am in a little bit of a hurry to beat the parts store closing, so I'm not going to film a whole lot of this motor coming out and getting separated. But there is plenty of room. I cut out all the front of the car, and if you go back to episode one or two when we were putting it all in, you can see how the motor mounts are built. I have the bottom bolt unbolted already, and now I can pick up a little weight on the motor and unbolt this one and they can come out of the car completely. And then I will use the motor itself to stop it from completely rolling. And then I will pick it up and just roll the car out. I will have to put a jack underneath the transmission for now, but once the transmission mount is out of the hole, I can just roll the car a little bit and then I can pick everything up and push the car out of my way. Actually, you know what? We can leave the motor mounts on it. Hit the pan, and we're gonna go ahead and raise it up. Just to where our pan's gonna clear. I might've went just a little bit too high. And that is how I like to build my race cars and just my cars that I swap. Just stupid, simple, easy. Now I got a motor and tranny out of the car. So I'm going to go ahead and lift it up, swing it out of the way, and we'll yank that transmission off. Well, guys, we left off with taking the motor out of this car, and then I believe I left you hanging. But I got the transmission off. I got the old throwout bearing, release bearing, whatever broke off of the shaft of the transmission because it was not the right one but before we get into all that we gotta get the lights turned on so we can see something in here so with this pilot bearing release bearing whatever you want to call it this one got stuck on because it was not the right size and i learned that in 1996 they changed the nv3500 to a internal slave cylinder like this which works all the way up to 2006. And the transmission that we have came out of a 94, so it's an external slave cylinder. But I think I have a solution to it. And next time we get a transmission, we're going to get the internal one. But how you tell is this giant slot here was for the external slave cylinder. And then on the 96 and newer, this is flat for the whole piece to slide on. But I think I got one that will fit on this. It's coming from AutoZone for $76. So Monday when it gets here and they give me a call, we're going to go ahead and throw the transmission back in the truck and make sure it fits before we buy that thing. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for that part, I'm gonna get my shop picked up and then we are gonna start sanding on this car, getting it ready for paint, and we need to pick a color. If you have any ideas on a color, drop it in the comments below. Hell, if you like it primer gray, tell me to leave it primer gray. I'm open to that. Um, we gotta get bash bars built. I gotta get some steel for a roll cage yet. And then we should be able to get a seat for it and then make it start. So I had to put the rear flange back into the diff. It was leaking on my floor every time I pushed it around. So got that done, the nuts tight, and I decided I'd just as well get these U-joints in this drive shaft. So let's go over this tiny little stub shaft or the chode as you may. So if you remember, we have a Express Van 3500 drive shaft right here or a full size pickup. And it is a 1350 u-joint which is what this flange is that i bought so now i can put these two together and then on this other end we'll put the slip yoke back on and since i have this in my hand and i gotta flip it over i'm gonna prove to you that there's a golf ball in here to balance this drive shaft a golf ball is one ounce so as this spins, that golf ball should act as a balancing bead and it will go to the unbalanced spot and just sit there. 
Now, if it actually works or not, I have no idea, but we're gonna find out and I'm gonna let you know how good this thing balances out. But we gotta finish putting the flanges on and the slip yoke and all that stuff first. So, just like so, I got the jaws closed to where the U-joint will sit on it. And now I'm just gonna hit right next to the end of that weld and it'll start knocking the joints out of it. So you can see roughly where I hit it a couple times and it just pushed the cap right out of it. All right, so that one was a little more stuck in there than I thought it was gonna be. I can't really get it past that, but with banging on the U-joint, one of them finally popped out. So now I can take a punch or something, go down in the center and knock that one out. Well, I dropped one of the caps and every last needle bearing fell out. So I am sitting here cleaning these and then I will take a little bit of grease, dab some grease on it and put them back in the cap and hopefully I didn't lose any. It is another beautiful morning out here in the lovely state of South Dakota. I can't believe I just said that. So now that we got the drive shaft put together, the car is outside. I'm going to go ahead and wash it, but I now have a drill press and it's gonna go over by the toolbox and then this figure eight car is gonna come out of my way. And then I got to clean up a little bit in there because we got a big project coming up for a customer, a buddy, it's a buddy, and I need that bay. As I'm cleaning the shop, I'm finding homes for some of this old racing memorabilia. So this is a door off one of my dirt track cars that I had for the longest amount of time. It was a number three, and then for the last race, I had to paint a number two on it. But pretty much my whole racing career, I was number three. I'm the baddest person to drive a G body next to Dale Sr. So I'm not real sure what happened to my box of screws. Jack might have grabbed them, but there was a couple nails sticking out and I like that. But I just got the phone call of a lifetime. We got to get in the truck and haul ass to the parts store. We got to throw a transmission in the back of the truck first because the slave cylinder throw out bearing should be at AutoZone for the transmission. Now I'm going to take you guys with and you'll see if it fits. If it don't fit, you'll know don't order that one. And I've been dancing around this car long enough. This is a 90 something Chevy Beretta figure eight car. It is not mine. This is my girlfriend's future into dirt track racing. She thinks she wants a sprint car. So we got to start somewhere. We picked this one up on Marketplace already built. We got to fix a couple things on it. It had one good hit right in front of the wheel. Otherwise this thing is solid still. I believe that's three total we got cole sitting here so with three and a half because you know possession is nine tenths of the law so with three and a half race cars in our possession i believe that means we have officially started steinfurth motorsports i have always wanted to own a motorsports team i have no idea what that entails of i have zero money to fund a race team but i got a drag car a drift car a figure eight car my buddy's drift car so i think we can get something done racing wise and your boy's quite the wheel man well we're back from the parts store and the slave cylinder did not fit our transmission so we're back into the situation of finding a new transmission or figuring out a s internal slave cylinder that will fit this transmission i need a internal slave cylinder that will slip over the retainer plate versus the newer ones came with the internal slave cylinder so they don't have the long shaft protector on the bearing retainer so it just sits flat and there's nothing for it to go over speedway motors does have one it is taking everything in my power not to drive there because it is going to take seven hours of my life but i have never been to a speedway store and of all places is in lincoln nebraska which is it's nebraska there's nothing there so i'm guessing it's going to be a letdown anyways but that would be the place that would have the part for sure and dial caliper it out these parts stores locally to me they just don't carry manual stuff anymore because it is phasing out of the world all right guys i'm gonna wrap this video up here i'm gonna get this thing ready for sanding so the next video will be paint prep and paint hopefully we are laying a color we, we gotta let it cure and we will be back to assembling this thing in the meantime we will get some figure eight content i got one more painting project coming in we got to get the G-Body in here on the laptop, get some PCMs and injector swapped out. And after that, this thing should be cured.